بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Alhamdulillah, we have Tawfiq to continue our study of defects of the tongue from Al-Mahajjah to Al-Bayba. The sixth uh, defect is what he calls At-Taqa'uruf al-Kalam bit-Tashadduq Means you, you know, put yourself under pressure to speak very eloquently you know, to speak eloquently is very good. But if it becomes too much, as if you are, you know, talking like, a, you know, we want to talk in a poetic way, and you give too much attention to, for example, putting words together in the way which is very interesting, uh, this is not good. Because, first of all, you have to put lots of energy to put this in together and you may not then have enough attention to the content plus you are taking too much attention also from your listeners to pay to attention to this and this is a case of what we call takalluf have you heard takalluf you know kolfa kolfa in arabic means uh, difficulty taklif which means obligation is called taklif because uh, it's a kind of discipline that we are you know given and at the beginning at least it's not easy you know to wake up in the morning for fajr you know to fast it's not easy at the beginning till you start enjoying so it is called taklif takalluf means that you undertake something which is too much for you for example i have guests okay so i islamically i should do you know what i can for my guests to provide them with you know care love good food for example but for example takalluf means I borrow money and you know uh, make you know lots of different types of food etc too much you're going too much out of your way if you borrow money for example to provide one simple food it's necessary okay but you know to borrow money or even spend from your own money to provide them with you know many different types of food fruits etc this is called takalluf yeah so you should be uh, welcoming your guests, but at the same time, you should be comfortable, not putting yourself or family under too much pressure. So Islamically, takalluf is not good. Okay? And there is a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I later, inshallah, can put it on the board. Ana. والأتقياء من أمتي براء من التكلف والبراء من التكلف. According to this, Rasulullah said, uh, "Me and pious members of my community, my nation, we are distanced from takalluf. Means we do things naturally, yeah." You can put a little pressure on yourself, but not too much to make it, you know, artificial and, you know, something that would then create lots of problems for you. So, one example of takalluf can be takalluf in a speech. Artificially, I try to speak, you know, very eloquently and put too much pressure on myself. You know, in general, in Islam, uh, first of all, our focus should be more on the spirit, not on the form. 
on the content, not just the words. And when it comes to the form, beauty is very important, but if it becomes too much artificially, you want to decorate your word or your home too much, it's not good. Yeah? So Islam encourages us to be tidy, organized, beautiful in everything, but not too much so that lots of your energy goes to this. So he quotes some hadith about this, but uh, I think the main hadith that you can easily, inshallah, remember. Inshallah, I will write it also down on the whiteboard. And then he says, in everything, it's better to uh, focus on your purpose. And yuqtasara fi kulli shayin ala maqsude. What is your purpose? When you speak, what do you want to achieve? You should focus on that. You want to, for example, convey a message. You want to teach. I don't know. You want to give a lecture for community. Don't spend too much time on rhetorics. To some extent, yes, but not too much. It's different from, for example, sometimes there is a maybe need for encouraging people to make, you know, uh, changes in the community or want people to encourage them to undertake some, you know, big task, etc. to want to encourage them for, for example, defending their country. Sometimes you may need that, but not always. You may need to use those uh, skills. And then he says, many times, not always, we cannot judge about all people, but many times those who speak so eloquently and, you know, spend too much time on this, it's a kind of show off. Is it Riyadh? Mm -hmm. And they want to say, you know, I'm very capable. But not always, but sometimes like this. Uh, I don't think we need to speak more about this. This is a very brief discussion, is, I think is enough because perhaps not very common issue. The next one, number seven, is Al-Fuhsh wa Sab wa Bidha'at al To say, you know, bad words, to be rude. This is also a problem. A believer, a mu'min, should be very polite. If they, you know, make a survey. Who are the most polite people? We should be among them. Yeah, if not on the top, we should. And this is for everything, even politicians. If there are Muslim or Shia politicians, I think they have to be the most polite people. You can be very strong, but at the same time polite. You don't need to be rude. Yeah, you can be very uh, strong, you have your position, you don't, you know, uh, give in, for example, you know, if there is pressure, but you can be very polite. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْفُحْشِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفُحْشَ وَالْتَفَحْحُشِ Avoid being rude and saying bad words, swearing at people. Allah doesn't love using bad words. In Farsi, we use also fohsh. I don't know, you know also maybe Urdu, is it used fohsh? Mm -hmm. So what do you use for uh, saying bad words, swearing at someone? Yes. In, in Urdu. In Urdu. Yeah. It's good that Alhamdulillah you don't know. <laughs> yes. There is a beautiful hadith that uh, some Muslims were swearing at the dead of, uh, you know, mushrikeen in the Battle of Badr. You know, some mushrikeen were killed. And they were, you know, 
saying bad words to them, using bad language against the dead pagans. Rasulullah said, La tasubbuha ola. Don't say bad words to this. this. Can I ask you about the, the lanat thing? Ah, lanat is the next one. <laughs> yes. So don't say bad words to them. فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَخْلُصُ إِلَيْهِمْ شَيْءٌ مِمَّا تَقُولُونَ According to this hadith, Rasulullah said, you know, these bad words would not reach them. But وَتُؤْذُونَ الْأَحْيَا But you are annoying the living ones. Yeah? أَلَا إِنَّ الْبِذَاءَ لُؤْمٌ To use bad words is a kind of meanness. لُؤْم لَئِم لُؤْم means to be mean. A person who is honorable doesn't use bad words. Yeah? Even with the people that you are sure they are bad, you should not use bad words. In another hadith, Rasulullah is quoted as saying, لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنُ بِالتَّعَانِ وَلَا الْفَاحِشِ وَلَا الْبَذِي A believer is not someone who annoys people by teasing them, you know, in a bad way and saying bad words. In another hadith, says, الْجَنَّةُ حَرَامٌ Heaven is prohibited, is, you know, not possible to go to heaven if someone is rude. Can we have rude people in heaven? <laughs> so maybe what you're saying, Sarisha, is when you're saying all these things, it's about holistically, isn't it? Mm. You're saying heaven is prohibited for someone that's rude. It's not particularly just the words. It's the way we carry ourselves and our interactions. And so we're looking at a whole package holistically. Uh, but the focus here is on language, yeah? Of course, other things also can be there, but the language is very important. But if someone is very polite, but politely annoys people, you know, does do all to them, <laughs> still that person cannot go to heaven, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Uh, there is a hadith uh, that Shaykh uh, Kulaini in Al Kafi quotes that Rasulullah said to Aisha, Ya Aisha, Lokan al Fohshur Rajulan, Lakan al Rajula Sawen. If, uh, you know, being rude was uh, possible to be embodied as a human being, would be a bad human being. If you were able to embody as a human being, it's a bad one. Jabir ibn Samura says, we were sitting with the Prophet. My father, mother, and me were sitting with the Prophet. And then the Prophet said, saying bad words is not in Islam. And the best people in Islam are the people with the best akhlaq, the best temper. So, what do we mean by using rude words and using bad language? Although it is somehow dependent on the culture, yeah, from culture to culture can be different. Uh, someone sometimes uh, may say something that in one culture it's not too bad, but in another culture it's very, you know, impolite. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. can vary. Uh, but we have to have our own high standards. You know, I remember when uh, I went to Manchester to start my PhD, you know. So I started my PhD January 97. Uh, so it was very difficult for me to call my supervisor with his first name. 
and I I don't think I ever told him with his first name. <laughs> I still can't say it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's very difficult for me. Mm-hmm. Or for example, you know, when we were you know walking and reaching a door, for example, so I was always asking him to go mm-hmm. first. So maybe here it's not needed, and maybe even sometimes they think it's. Uh, but I think we should have our own standards. Uh, otherwise, little by little, we lose everything. And some of the things that can be, uh, for example, not very polite, you know, talking about some, you know, sexual relations or things, you know, for example, you know. Some people very explicitly talk about these things or about, for example, some parts of body or, for example, I don't know. Uh, many things. Some people, unfortunately, are not very careful. And in some cultures, this has also reached a level of first start with language. But now, even, for example, in front of other people, they don't mind having, you know, sex or, you know, or for example, going to, uh, for example, swimming pool and then ne- become naked and you know take shower, etc. <coughs> in the schools. So, if we don't stop with the language, then little by little, it can become actually action. So, we have to be very careful about our language. And also, when we talk about people who have some issues, some illnesses, also we need to be careful not to use a very explicit language that may annoy them, you know. Uh, If sometimes something is okay, but sometimes, you know, some people don't want to be labeled and, you know, given a title or whatever. We have to be very careful about this. The reason for using bad language can be, he says, either 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 someone wants to annoy the other party, or sometimes it is a habit. It has become a habit because he, this person has been with rude people or has been, you know, like this for some time, has got used to it. And uh, this is one of the bad habits of bad people, people who have no good upbringing, that their language is very bad and very rude. And there are things in, unfortunately, nowadays in English, in on TVs, etc., you know, uh, very rude things that they keep saying, you know. A Bedouin said to the Prophet, Please give me advice, Ausani. Rasulullah said, first, alayka be Allah. The first thing to observe is taqwa. Then Rasulullah said, enemro'un ayyaraka be shay'in ya'lamuhu fi. If someone blames you for something that he knows it is in you. So if you have a bad habit or bad quality, and he blames you for that. You have it. Don't blame him with a bad quality that he has. فَلَا تُعَيِّرْهُ بِشَيْءٍ تَعْلَمُهُ فِيهِ So don't, you know, retaliate. يَكُونُ وَبَالُهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَجْرُهُ لك. The burden of this would be on him and you will be rewarded because you didn't do the same thing yeah if someone says something bad to me i shouldn't repeat and allah is going to reward me don't swear at any creature even if you have a camel if you have a horse a donkey a cat, don't swear at them. It's a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this uh, Bedouin says, 
after that I didn't swear at anyone and anything. Fama sabab to shay'an means nothing, you know, no, no, not only human beings, no, nothing. Someone called Ayyad ibn Hamar, he says, I told the Prophet, uh, a person from my own, all my own people, Yasubbuni, he swears at me, and he is lower than me. So maybe he man, means socially, or you know, I don't know, age-wise, he says he's lower than me. So can I do something against him? So he is swearing at me. Rasulullah said, Al mutasaban shaitanan yata'avanan wa yata'ada. Two people that, you know, back and forth swear at each other, they are two satans that are helping each other and exchanging with each other. So if one person is rude to you, don't you also try to retaliate by being rude? And then in this way, you are helping each other to follow satanic act of sap. There is also hadith Mal'oonun man sabba waliday. If someone swears at his parents or her parents, is he would or she would be cursed. I mean, it would be far from mercy of Allah if they swear at their parents. Unfortunately, sometimes people maybe they get angry or upset, you know, or maybe parents have not been kind to them. Then they think they have right to be rude and say bad things to the parents. But also, according to the hadith, one instance of this, of swearing at your parents, is when you say bad things to someone's parents and they swear at your parents. Here also you have caused swearing at your parents. Okay? So, this hadith is there. That... Rasulullah counted among the people who are, you know, mal'oon. One is man la'ana abawai. If someone curses his parents or her parents. Then someone said, ayujadu rajulun yal'anu abawai. Is there anyone who curses his parents? And Rasulullah said, na'am. Yal'anu abaa ar-rajal ba ummahatihim fa yal'anuna abawai. When someone curses fathers or mothers of people and they then curse this person's parents so he is responsible so he has cursed his parents even the quran says don't swear at their idols if you swear at their idols then they swear at allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we Nauzubillah swear at people that other Muslims or other people love, then they will swear at our Imams. And you know, yeah. so, so we should be very careful. We should not start this fight and we should not let this continue. If someone else does that, okay, it's their burden. So, number six was to speak with too much of you know rhetorics and eloquence you know artificially number seven was to be rude and to use bad language and swear at people or even things number eight i uh, start this discussion but we can continue next week is a lan lan to curse Emma le heywanen, ole jamaden, ole ensanen. Sometimes someone curses his animal. For example, we have hadith that someone cursed uh, her camel. Okay, so she was riding on a camel and cursed this camel. Then, according to this hadith, Rasulullah said, then this person should not ride this camel 
because this camel is malon. So you say you said malon. So why you are riding it? Cursing, for example, my car today is not starting. I curse my car. Why? You must not get used to cursing, even with you know non-living beings with animals. Because if you get used to these things, uh, then you can curse also people. Plus, how can a movement, you know, curse? Because we have to ask for goodness. We have to ask for mercy. The only exception is those people that they are already cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of their very bad you know, quality and character that we talk about them. But we are not, you know, we are not there to decide on behalf of Allah. If Allah has decided already based on their own performance, that's another issue. But I cannot, you know, say to Allah, you know, curse your creature. Yeah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-mu'minu laysa bil-la'anin. La'an means the one who curses a lot. Mu'min is not someone who curses a lot. So it means mu'min does not have the habit of cursing. Okay? Yes. We have, for example, in the Quran, Tabbad yada abi lahabin wa tab. Yeah? Or for example, Quran says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Those who annoy Allah and the Messenger, Allah curses them. These are exceptions. But we are not, you know, taking the uh, liberty and, you know, cursing everyone, you know. You know the story that in the Battle of Uhud, when they killed Hamza uh, and many Muslims, Prophet was injured. Some people said, Oh Rasulullah, uh, you know, we wish you curse them. Then Rasulullah said, Allah has not sent me to curse. And he prayed. He said, Allahumma qawmi fa innahum la My, Please guide my people. Even he considered those pagans of Mecca as his people. Please guide them. They don't know. So mu'min is not la'an, is not someone who is used to curse. Even sometimes parents, when their children annoy them or they are disrespectful, sometimes they curse them. They don't maybe mean uh, from deep, you know deep heart, you know, but it's not good. It has some impact. So. Uh, you know, sometimes I say in this way that, for example, suppose your child is annoying you, okay? And this is before being cursed. Now you think if you curse him, it becomes better? <laughs> yeah, if someone is cursed, or for example, if someone's husband or wife or in-laws are annoying him or her, if you curse them, you think they become better? They don't become better, they become worse. Mm -hmm. You have to pray for them so that they become better. So the story that I told you about <coughs> that lady that uh, was on a camel is this, that there was a lady from Ansar on a camel and she was tired uh, from this you know camel and cursed her and Rasulullah said Khudu ma alayha. so this lady should not then ride on this camel because it's cursed another story is that Anas says a, we, uh, there was a person who was with the Prophet and was on a camel and cursed his camel then Rasulullah said don't come travel with us on the camel which is cursed. Perhaps you know Rasulullah wanted to tell them that if you really you know curse this animal, why you are you know using this animal? So laan 
is different from sub. So this is a technical discussion. Sub means to be rude and to use bad language. Lan necessarily is not sub, although maybe you curse in a rude way. Yeah, because lan basically means may Allah's mercy be away from you. Okay, this is the meaning of uh, yes. It's not a question, but um, sorry, my my dad was murdered, and you know, like the imams, like you know, when we curse, like um, your mom and he's killer, we curse him, we automatically curse the one who killed our father. Is that okay? We curse the killer of the one who killed our father. Uh -huh. Our father, mm, my dad, basically. Yeah. So on, what I'm saying is because we, like in other imams, so, we I automatically curse the person who killed my dad. Yeah. So this is what we are going to discuss. Uh, there are exceptions, and we will see what are the exceptions according to um, Ghazali and according to Mullah Muhsin Faizakarshani. But before we go into exceptions, uh, let us just clarify the concepts. So we have two points, two concepts. One is sab, which means to use bad words. For example, in the Battle of Safin, uh, Amir al Mu'min heard that some people are cursing Muawiyah and the opposite army. He said, I don't like you to be rude to do sap. Just say what they have done. And say then, Oh Allah, please protect our blood and their blood. And reconcile between us. Even Amir al Mumin didn't allow his soldiers to use bad words against Muawiyah. Okay? This is one point. But then we have La'an. La'an mean, means to ask Allah to not send His mercy on someone, to deprive someone or some people from His mercy. Okay. Ghazali has a view. I mentioned Ghazali's view and inshallah then next week I talk about Mullah Mohsen face view and uh, what I think you know we can also uh, today you know follow as a policy. Ghazali says Lan is not permissible Zalika Gayru Ja is Illa Alam and Yatasifu Bisefatin Tuba Eduhu Minallah. He says Lan is not permissible unless someone has a quality that would keep him away from God. So someone who is already away from God, far from God. If someone is kafir or zalim, unjust. Okay, he says Someone who has these qualities already is away from God, far from God. So he says it's permissible. Like saying, "Lanatullah ala zalimin." Allah's uh, curse be upon those who do zulm. Or Allah, yes. Yeah. No, no, withhold his mercy. Yeah. Just, that's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Because I think the word curse in English, because I think of it, would mean that you are um, you're putting something bad onto some onto somebody. But withholding is it's got a more positive connotation. Yeah. Because if Allah withholds His mercy, then all the bad things happen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because it's mercy who saves us from bad things. Depending on how much mercy is, because if he 
denies mercy altogether, then will not exist. <laughs> yeah. But depending on how much we receive his mercy, then, for example, one form of mercy is health. One form of mel uh, uh, mercy is wealth, you know, respect, all these things, having family, children, etc. These are all different branches of his rahmah. So, according to Ghazali, yes. Also in the street, I think Ghazali is saying a kafir or zalim. Zalim. Yes, and, and is, is, is that? <laughs> yeah. Um, zulm. Zulm means injustice, yeah, oppression. So, but then is it up to the person, the individual, to make that decision whether somebody's a, a kafir or zalim? Uh -huh. No. Up to here, he said, uh, say it in a general way. Of course, uh, I uh, believe that when we say kafir, we have to be careful. We shouldn't uh, you know, think that it is every non-Muslim. Because in the Quran, kafir most of the time is kufr al juhud means someone who knows and doesn't accept. Like Abu Lahab, like you know Abu Jahl, not every non-Muslim. As I said, Rasulullah didn't even curse people of Mecca who were mushrik. But many of the Rasul said, La ya'lamun, they don't know. They need more time, although they knew him for a long time, but he says, still, there is a chance that maybe after some time, and, and you know, actually all of them later became Muslims. So we shouldn't, you know, think that every non-Muslim, you know, deserves, you know, this, no. But I'm explaining what Ghazali is saying. So he says, Yanbaghi an yuttaba'a fiha lafzu shar Ghazali says we should be very careful and just follow what we have received in religion. You cannot be creative in, you know, of using your own words and terms and start, you know, cursing people. Just use what is received from the scripture. Why? He says, Because this is a very big thing, you know, it's a very dangerous, you know, road to go. Because it's like you are, you know, asking Allah to send away someone. And somehow you are, you know, suggesting to Allah. And he says, how do you know that this person is really someone that Allah doesn't want him, doesn't love him? Only Allah knows who is really so bad. And Rasulullah, if Allah, you know, this global Rasulullah has access to al Mulghayb. But we cannot, you know, nominate people. And, you know, <laughs> even it's more than nominate. Sometimes we say, oh, Allah, I nominate this person for your cursing. But <laughs> we don't say like this. We say, no, curse him. <laughs> yeah, we ask Allah, I demand. So he says there are three qualities. This is Ghazali. He says there are three qualities that make someone, uh, you know, entitled or you know someone uh, deserving land al kufru wal bid'atu wal fisq kufr denying the truth for example bid'a heresy fisq means to be sinful but he says in these three, there are different ways to do it. For example, you can say in a general way, "La'natullah ala al-kafirin." Allah's may Allah's curse be upon those who reject and fight the truth, or may Allah's curse be upon the heretics, or upon the transgressors and you know sinful people, fasakh, the sinful people, the sinners, for example. Another way is 
to start mentioning different groups. For example, when you say kuffar, start talking about different communities who are kafir. Okay? For example, say, you know, khawarij, I don't know, this, this group. Uh, for example, those, instead of just saying fasir, say those who take usury, reba. Okay? Take usury, you know, and etc. But he says, you have to be very careful. Because when you say even bid'ah, those who are heretics, and then you want to apply to the groups, you have to be expert about what is bid'ah, what is heresy, and are these people really heretics or not. So he says, lay people should not get into this. So first is very general, second is still general but uh, limited to the groups and sects, for example. And the third way is Allahu Allah Shahs to curse a particular person specifically by name. This is not general anymore, this is a specific. And he says I have issue with this, Ghazali says, Fi Nadarun. For example, to say Zaydun La'anahullah. For example, you, you see Zayd is Kafir or Fasiq or heretic, you say this person, may Allah curse him. And he says we shouldn't do this unless it's a person that is specifically cursed. For example, Pharaoh, we can do this, for example. Uh, Abu Lahab, we can do it. But a person that we don't know everything about this person, especially a person who is living, maybe this person later becomes a good person. Yeah? How can you curse someone that still is living? Maybe he becomes a good person. So he says, any person that in uh, our text we see that this person is cursed particularly he says we can curse him like Pharaoh Abu Jahl because we know these people died with that you know cough and arrogance etc and they are cursed but someone who is in our time living Ghazali says we cannot curse him because maybe later he becomes a believer or he becomes a good believer and maybe he becomes very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the opinion of Ghazali. Mullah Muhsan Faiz rahmatullahi has here a different uh, understanding. Some, some of the things are common but some are different. And inshallah, uh, we discuss this later, plus my own inshallah, uh, little opinion. So inshallah, we will see.